Bola Binaka, and a very good morning to you all. It is indeed an honor and privilege to be invited here today at the third Asia-Pacific Rainforest Summit. I am proud to be here on behalf of the Fiji government to deliver my address at this session. I thank the government of Indonesia and the Ministry of Environment and Forestry for hosting this third summit and the coordinating partner country, Australia and the Department of Environment and Energy for their combined efforts in making this all happen. As you know, through its presidency of COP23, Fiji has been building a grand coalition committed to taking action and communicating the sense of agency widely to all levels of government, to investors and financing institutions, to the private sector, to civil society, organizations, and to local communities. As our Prime Minister, the Honorable Chosaya Warenge Banimarama stated at the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting this past week, and I quote, we must accelerate climate action and drive decarbonization and press for the most ambitious target of the Paris Agreement that is limiting the increase in global warming to 1.5 degree Celsius, above that of the pre-industrial age, unquote. In March this year, Fiji hosted the third regional Pacific NDC dialogue on nationally determined contributions and consultations on the regional Pacific NDC hub to support countries in the process of implementation and enhancement of their NDCs. This regional platform was called for during the Climate Action Pacific Partnership in July 2017. Built on past dialogues in support of NDC implementation, this provided a Pacific platform for discussions on NDC implementation planning, linkages to SDG processes, opportunities to advance gender, translating NDCs into investable and actionable projects, and long-term development strategies under the Paris Agreement, such as the 2050 platform. As a nation, we have mainstream and integrated climate change into national planning and development processes, economic policy, and decision making. This has led to the development of the Green Growth Framework for Fiji. The five-year and 20-year national development plans and the NDC implementation roadmap and framework for the National Adaptation Plan. As part of this increasingly comprehensive approach to climate change, Fiji acknowledges the importance of forests both in terms of achieving its Paris Agreement goals and those of the United Nations Sustainable Development Agenda. In particular, the critical role of forest is acknowledged in Article 5 of the Paris Agreement, which urges countries to take, such, to take action to conserve and enhance forest, including through reducing deforestation and forest degradation. Furthermore, Fiji understands that forests are a critical part of the answer to our climate change because we know that a 1.5 degree wall is simply not possible without tackling deforestation and forest degradation and the associated emissions. Forests are a large part of our current problem in terms of continuing emission from deforestation, but an even larger part of the solution in terms of ending those emissions and enhancing the safe and natural carbon capture storage function of standing and regrowing forests. 
and without promoting healthy forests, we also know that our nations won't be resilient to the impacts of the extreme weather events without these natural buffers and barriers that protect us and that contribute to healthy, sustainable livelihoods. In our green growth framework for Fiji, we have specifically recognized the role of forests in climate change mitigation and adaptation efforts. Reducing emission from deforestation and forest degradation and forestry protected areas are mentioned as activities which focus on sustaining the natural forest resources. Renewed efforts are identified for implementation of forestation and reforestation and conservation of natural forest. In Fiji, 54.7% or about 1 million hectares of Fiji is forested. Of this, 89.4% or roughly 894,000 hectares is classified as primary forest, the most biodiverse form of forest. Forest in this contest include not, not, not only land-based forest systems, but also the wider mangroves and sea grasses and reef systems that are critical to island nations. However, we also have large areas of degraded and unutilized land with potential for broad reforestation and afforestation activities. As a country, we are committed to ensuring we place the protection of our remaining forest and the pursuit of restoring degraded areas at the heart of our national response to climate change. To achieve, we embarked on the following. One, Fiji has embarked on a comprehensive Red Plus strategy, which continues to assess issues such as drivers of deforestation and forest degradation, strategic environmental social assessment, feedback grievances redress mechanism, carbon rights and benefit sharing mechanism. We have a Red Plus demonstration site and MRV systems being finalized. Fiji has been working with the Forest Carbon Partnership Facility of the World Bank and the SPC GIZ Regional Program, coping with climate change in the Pacific Island region. As part of its Red Plus readiness work, this includes the intent to develop an emission reduction program to cover 90% of the land area of Fiji and 94% of forested areas in Bitilevu, Wanwalevu, and in Tabeuni, and the sale of 3.6 million red plus emission reduction between 2019 to 2024 to the FCPF. This readiness work also includes Fiji working closely with the University of Hamburg to establish its forest reference level, work that is almost complete. Fiji has legally declared and protected forest and nature reserves, as well as a government-managed national park. This national park is a model for other parks and has been replicated around the nation as community-based ecotourism projects to improve livelihood and alleviate poverty, economic development, and biodiversity conservation. The communities living around this national park benefit from employment in managing the park and economic benefits from tourism activities. This national forest park was also awarded the Certification of Excellence winner in 2015 by TripAdvisor as a Global Tourism Survey recognition and the Queen's Commonwealth Canopy Award for Forest Conservation. Fiji acknowledges the role of carbon-rich mangroves in climate adaptation. 
preventing coastal erosion, addressing risks from coastal flooding and sea level rise. Currently, Fiji is undertaking a community-based mangrove restoration and sustainable management project with support from ITTO. The project includes policy development, capacity building, establishing alternative species for mangrove dependent communities and educating them towards conservation of mangroves. The same project site is being used to conduct preliminary work on blue carbon with Conservation International and is a first for Fiji in terms of blue carbon work. Finally, going towards Fiji has noted in its NDC that further accounting will need to take place to incorporate the mitigation potential for Fiji's forestry sector via the Red Plus program. Once this is done, Fiji will look as to how Red Plus will be incorporated into its NDC. At this point, I wish to acknowledge the financial, technical, scientific, capacity building, and advisory support rendered towards the implementation of its global and national forest goals by various organizations, including World Bank, FCPF, JEF, FAO, GIZ, Asia, UNFF, SPC, Conservation International, UNDP, WWF, ITTO, EU, to name a few. These organizations have been instrumental in supporting Fiji drive national actions towards sustainable management, development, restoration, and protection of forest in Fiji. As Minister for Forest, I also believe that there is an important link between the objectives of the Paris Agreement and the Global Sustainable Development Goals and protecting our rainforest as all inspirable. In Fiji, at a sub-national level, the Ministry Plan aligned to Fiji's 20-year National Development Plan, the SDG Goals and the UNFF Strategic Goals, the Forest Sector Strategic Development Plan prioritizes a sustainable forest management framework encompassing outputs addressing SDGs 1, 2, 5, 7, 13, 14, and 15. One of the goals of the Ministry's Strategic Development Plan is to contribute positively to the global environment. This will address environmental-related SDGs along with commitments embedded in the Convention on Biodiversity the United Nations Forum on Forest, and the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, all of which Fiji is party to. The activities implemented to deliver SDP outputs and outcomes, including afforestation and reforestation, to enhance carbon stocks, protect and restore catchments, conserve biodiversity, establish wood and non-wood plantations, including biofuel and food security species, coastal and mangrove restoration. Most of this reforestation includes community participation on community-owned land, with the government empowering communities, women and youth, and providing financial and development incentives for their efforts. We recognize that mangroves can play a significant role in conserving and enhancing carbon sinks, enabling adaptation to climate change, and achieving the UN Sustainable Development Goals 5, 13, 14, and 15. This integration of the Paris Agreement Goals and the SDG is seen by Fiji as a critical to protecting forests and people, supporting economic growth, it will require the ongoing development of policies, plans, and frameworks to achieve this. As Fiji reaffirms its commitments towards the global agenda under the SDGs 
and Paris Agreement, it will continue to protect forest and people, supporting economic growth and addressing rainforest conservation. Finally, I now wish to turn to the issues of finance. Critical to our efforts to protect forest is the need for innovative finance mechanism to protect all kinds of forest. Again, including land-based forest, mangroves, and sea grasses. While negotiation on forest have been among the most constructive strands of negotiation over the last 10 years, producing detailed rule book on Red Plus, the fact remains that the rule provides no actual formal mechanism within Red Plus for financing forest. Red Plus has struggled because the lack of a carbon market has left it dependent on voluntary action and without the certainty needed to attract private funding. Additionally, the mechanism being pursued by Norway and the World Bank's Forest Carbon Partnership Facility are excellent measures to develop Red Plus. But we now need long-term public and private sector finance flows to ensure that finance will flow into actual forest. In this regard, I note that while many governments have implemented measures to protect forests through establishing protected areas, this is not sufficient to avoid their destruction. Furthermore, despite the natural value of forest, they do not offer a financial return on investing in their conservation, protection, and management that can compete with the more destructive uses. There are no well-established markets for forest carbon or the broader benefits they provide, despite being critical to our very survival. Forests have therefore been unable to attract private sector finance at any scale. The hard cold reality is that protecting forest at any scale requires capital, significant expenditure, like any green infrastructure project. Between 2006 and 2014, a total of US $9.8 billion was invested into forest, almost 90% of which came from the public sector. However, it is estimated that somewhere between US 17 to 33 billion is required per year to have deforestation by 2030. Given the limits on public climate finance, substantial financial support must come from vastly larger pools of capital available only from the private sector. Fiji has taken leadership in this regard by launching our own sovereign green bond, which will raise 100 million Fijian dollars, which was listed on the London Stock Exchange last week. The proceeds of which will go towards climate mitigation and adaptation projects, including possibly in the red plus and reforestation area. Going forward, we are hopeful that the rules being negotiated for the implementation of the Paris Agreement smooth the way for further international cooperation on Red Plus and, in particular, innovative financing approaches under Article 6. All countries, but especially forest countries, enhance the profile of forest in the indices commensurate with the mitigation potential and potential to contribute to other SDGs. Mechanisms such as the GCF result-based payment for Red Plus are implemented. Developed countries and the private sector increase financing flows for forest, especially the promise of result-based Red Plus payments, commensurate with the mitigation potential. This includes working together to develop mechanisms that drive and attract investments, both public and private, into Red Plus, in a way that values this forest for their nature-based solutions 
to climate change and assisting to adapt to climate change. And other countries work with PG to follow the lead we have taken with our green bond to develop bonds tailored specifically towards protect, protecting forests and landscape. We look forward to a successful Third Asia Pacific Rainforest Summit and wish you all a constructive and enjoyable three days in your participation and contributions towards the success of this summit. Vinaka, and thank you very much.